And now we will learn how to manage the tenant's data. There are two places in QuickBooks that allow you to manage your tenant's information. The Customer Center window and the Customer, or in our case, Tenant, specific reports. We're going to explore both of these very thoroughly in this particular video. First, the Customer Center. It allows you to add, edit, delete, or make inactive any tenant or tenant's records. It's like a Rolodex or a database of tenants that allows you to access any information about your tenants with just a few clicks. You can see all the transactions you ever had with a particular tenant. You can take notes and update the notes about your tenants right inside their own records. So, let's take a look. Let's just open it up and see what it looks like. From the main menu, click Customers. Customer Center. Now, of course, in a couple of minutes, we're going to put the tenants list right here. And after we put in the tenants, their names will appear here, and we'll put in their information like their phone number, their email, and any other information we need will be right here. The proper way to set up tenants' records would be in a hierarchy like a pyramid. For example, if you had one company that owned two buildings, one of the buildings was on Peyton Place, and that building had four units, and the other building was on Meadow Lane, and that building had four living units. That means that the company in the company file would have eight records, four of which would be under each building. If you set it up the proper way, then your Profit and loss by apartment or profit and loss by building will be correct. Remember, no matter how many buildings are in one company under one legal entity, it has to be one company per one company file. Then in that file, you can list the buildings in the customer center and then list the units and the tenants as sub-customers under that building. So, let's take a look. Let's imagine this is the tenant list for Peyton Place and the tenant list for Meadow Lane, but both of those buildings are in our company. We're going to put in everyone on the tenant list just to see how it gets input, but in our course, we're only going to use Meadow Lane just to save time. So let's take a look how to put in this information. Here we are in the customer center, okay? On the top left, you see New Customer, click New Customer, then first you have to click New Customer and put in the building. We're going to put in first Meadow Lane. Now we're going to click OK. If we double click, we can edit any of the permanent information. QuickBooks thinks this is a particular customer. So if there were an email address or a phone number associated with the building itself or any other important data that you feel you could put in and benefit from in the Meadow Lane building record, you could put it here. Let's do the same thing for Peyton Place. New customer, new customer, Peyton Place. So all I did was put the name of the buildings. Now what we're going to do is put the tenants under each building. For example, under Meadow Lane, we're going to put in apartment 1A is Alan Arby, 2B is Betty Boop, and so on. This is how you do it. You Well, we could make this column a little wider if we need to. So click on the building, then when that building is selected, click New Customer Job, and over here, click Add Job. Remember, you have to click Add Job when Meadow Lane is selected. Now it says New Job, and it knows it's under Meadow Lane. And we type in Apartment 1A, Allen Arby. Just follow along step by step. Now, of course, you might want to put a dash between the 1A and the Allen Arby. And, of course, you could fill in other information about his work number and his website, 
or additional information about, you know, you might want to categorize certain types of customers and other kinds of things that you could explore and experiment with if you edit his information and need to pull it up at any given moment. Click OK and notice there's an indent here. This indent tells you that Alan Arby is under Meadow Lane. Make sure Meadow Lane is selected and click New, Add Job. Now we type in apartment 2B dash Betty Boop. And of course we could put in any other additional information that we could double click and open and edit at any time. Click OK. Notice Betty Boop is under Meadow Lane. Again, make sure Meadow Lane. Be careful not to leave the cursor on Betty Boop or you're going to make a sub customer of Betty Boop. Make sure you again select Meadow Lane. Click New Customer, Add Job. And then this is apartment 3C, Candy, Charles. Okay, then click OK. Same thing, Meadow Lane, new customer, add job, 4D, Dave, Dini. Okay, very good. Click OK. Now, um, notice if I click 1A Allen Arby, his name comes up here and it says what job he's under and if I clicked here after I recorded his transactions I would see all of his transactions listed here and so on. See if you can do the rest with Peyton Place while I pause the video. See if when you come back to the video your Peyton Place list looks the same as mine. So if your final list looks like this with these folks indented after Peyton Place then you did the setup correctly for the other tenants. If not, you have to learn what you used when managing the chart of accounts regarding deleting and making uh, list items inactive in order to get it to work right. Don't forget, if I double click and I see that I'm under the wrong job, I can switch jobs if I need to. In this case, I don't, but that might help you correct things so that we can move on to the next part of the video. And here we are in the next part of the video. We're going to explore features of the Customer Center. First, you should know that if you open the Customer Center, you can see every tra transaction you ever had with that tenant. So, just to remind you how to open it, you click Customer, Customer Center. If you want, you can even add it to the icon bar. Let's do that. View. Add Customer Center to the icon bar and click OK. Now we won't have to remember where to click in the main menu to open it up. Now, notice if I click 2B and I get Betty Boop, what would show up here under, by the way, there's the Customer Job tab and the Transactions tab in the left margin. So I prefer to see my customer transactions organized by customer, not by transaction type. If you want to see your uh, transactions organized by transaction type, of course you would click there, but I'm not going to. We click Customer Job here, and you can see them listed here as long as you choose this tab. If this tab is chosen, you can see all transactions. You can sort them by type, you, or you could even sort them by date, or even choose a different date range, and that's how you can see all of the customer or tenant transactions. You can actually sort them as I mentioned and you can record notes. If you have issues or problems with a tenant, what you can do is select that tenant, then click notes and then you can click manage note, add new and type in anything you want to remember about this tenant and that note will be there. You can even date and time stamp the notes so that you can remember the date and time that you put that note in then click OK and then it means when you come back to that particular tenant you'll automatically see notes as soon as you click here and you'll see each note that you left listed here and when you click on it you can see the note and you can edit it or delete it or do whatever you want. So don't forget to add to the list of handy things that the customer center can do the fact that you can date and timestamp the notes that you make for the customer. Now the customer center is nice, but there is no substitute for the customer, or more specifically, the tenant reports. The most important report is the customer balance detail. Now, 
We don't want to call it the customer balance detail. We want to call it the tenant balance detail. But what it will show us is not only every transaction we've ever had with that particular tenant, or at least transactions that change the balance, but it also shows the running balance, which means the balance that the customer or tenant owed us, or the balance that we owed the tenant at any particular moment in time. So we have to open it up, pin it to the icon bar, and we'd like to change the name from the customer balance detail to the tenant balance detail. So, from the main menu, we click customers, oh, excuse me, we click reports, reports, customers and receivables, customer balance detail. Now, of course, it's blank now because we haven't had any transactions, but we need to do two things. We need to expand our knowledge of modifying reports a little bit to make this read tenant balance detail. So we learned in a previous video that if we wish to customize a report, we go to the top left and we click Customize Report. Then, in this case, we're going to customize the header footer, and we're simply going to change the word customer in the title of the report to the word tenant. Now it says tenant balance detail. If you want, you could even remove date prepared, time prepared, and any of this other nonsense, and then just click OK. And now the title of the report looks the way we need it to look. We can also expand upon the knowledge that we learned about our icon bar by putting it up in the icon bar, but also having the label read tenant balance detail. So from the main menu, we click View, to come down to Add Customer Balance Detail to the icon bar, but remember, in the label, we can change the word Customer to the word Tenant. Oops, by not doing it that way, you have to do it this way. You go Tenant, just like that. And now the label will say Tenant Balance Detail. So if we want to see the tenant balance detail, we click here and it remembers the title that we like. So now we have successfully changed our customer balance detail into tenant balance detail. And we're going to do the same thing with the second most important cust uh, tenant report, the profit and loss by job. Let's make it change to the profit and loss by tenant. Very simple. From the main menu, click reports jobs, time, and mileage, and then profit and loss by job. Now, don't forget to make the date pull down show the results of all transactions, regardless of date. Now we'll change the title in the report. Click Customize Report, click the Header and Footer tab, and change the word Job to the word Tenant. Don't forget to remove the date prepared, the time prepared, and report basis, and anything else in the header footer tab that you want to get rid of. Now when I click OK, it has the right title and it's nice and neat. Now all we have to do is add it to the icon bar. From the main menu, click View, Add Profit and Loss by Job to the icon bar, but in the label, we'll change the word Job to the word tenant. So we're changing the label in the icon bar. Now we have profit and loss by tenant. Just one more thing. I don't like that this says customers. I want to change it to have it say tenant. So I'm going to click view, customize icon bar, click on the word customer, click the word edit, and change the word customer to tenants records. And that improves your skill in QuickBooks about the icon bar, and it clarifies what we're about to do going forward. Excellent work. Be very patient. There's only one more setup video after this, I promise, and then we will start to make landlord-related transactions.